Backing up your Nintendo Wii games to a USB drive makes sense, as optical drives have a limited lifespan. In this video, I'm going to show you all the steps that you need to take to back up your Nintendo Wii games to a hard drive. And it all starts right now. Based on recent events surrounding one of the videos on this channel, I want to share two quick things with you before we get started. First one is, unless you sail the high seas, don't be a pirate. Make sure you own the hardware and the software for any games that you want to back up. And make sure they're your copies. And second of all, don't go searching the internet looking for pirated games. Lots of these websites have spam, viruses, and other things that are bad for your computer and your lifestyle. Okay, let's get started. There are only a few things you need to get this project done, but they certainly are requisite. You're going to need a Nintendo Wii, of course. And you'll need to have internet access to be able to download artwork. It's going to have to have the homebrew channel installed. So if your Wii doesn't have homebrew and channel installed, check out this guide here to learn how to get it done. You also need a compatible USB hard drive. I've linked a great Toshiba one, and I use Toshiba for my own Wii, down in the description below from Amazon. You also need an SD card that's less than or equal to 32 gigabytes. And again, I've linked a great one in the description below. All the links for the downloads are also listed in the description below. Before you can use USB Loader GX, you need to have D2X CIOS Installer installed on your Wii. That's a mouthful, isn't it? No, iOS isn't the same iOS that's used on Apple products. And the C stands for Custom. This is replacing some key components of the operating system on your Nintendo Wii to make it possible to load your games through the USB ports on the back of the system. So download it here. Here's where you can get the USB Loader GX software. When you click on the link, it should start downloading automatically. If it doesn't, just click the big green download button and it will start to download for you. These are the only two things you need to download from the internet. Now just make sure your SD card is FAT32 formatted and insert it into your computer. Look for the SD card in the navigation on the left of File Explorer. In this case, it's named Subscribe. How convenient. If you came here from my Wii Homebrew Channel installation video, you'll already have an apps folder on your SD card. If not, right click, go down to New, then Folder, and create a folder and name it Apps. Back at the Downloads folder, uncompress the two files you just downloaded. One's going to be a 7z file and the other one's going to be a standard zip file. I always recommend deleting compressed files after you extract them. It helps prevent confusion down the road. Once you have both files extracted and both files deleted, you just need to go into each of these folders and drill in just a bit to do a quick copy and paste job. So drill into the first one and go into the apps folder. Then grab this folder. Just copy it. Then go to the SD card called subscribe. Go into that apps folder and paste it. Lather, rinse, and repeat as the old saying goes. Go back to the downloads folder, grab the second folder, go into the apps folder there, and copy that folder. Go back to the SD card named subscribe. Go into that apps folder and paste it right there. And now you're done shuffling files around. You can eject the SD card from your computer and go insert it into your Nintendo Wii. At your Nintendo Wii with the SD card inserted, go to the Homebrew channel. There's a three-step process to this D2X CIOS installer and I'm gonna demonstrate it for you here. So go ahead and launch D2X CIOS installer and click load. You'll be greeted with a quick loading screen, and then you'll be greeted with this menu with credits. Press the A button on the Wii Boat to continue. Here's that three-step process that I mentioned just a moment ago. You need to go into the settings for each of these, and you're going to have to run this process three times. So the first one is 
when you have to select CIOS, you want to pick the most recent beta version that you can choose. In this example, it's version 53 beta. So select that. Then use the plus button on the Wiimote to scroll down. The next setting is called Select CIOS Base. While it defaults to 37, for this example, use the plus pad and move it to the right until you get to number 56. Then use the plus pad on the Wiimote to scroll down to the next one. In this case, it's already defaulted to 249, which is what you need for the first installation. So use the plus pad down until you get to CIOS Revision and you want to choose 65535. And that's going to stay the same for all of these. So press the A button to continue and the A button again to run the install. This process takes about one minute in real time and then you'll get a confirmation screen saying everything either was successful or not, in this case successful. So press the A button on the Wiimote to continue and move on to the second install. Keep this first setting the same, whatever the most current beta version of the software is. Then use the plus pad to come down one. Change this number from 56 to 57. Then use the plus pad again to come down. Change this number from 249 to 250. And then keep this one the same at 65535. Press the A button and press it again to start the install. The install this time takes about one minute once again, and you'll get that confirmation screen when everything turns out either okay or notify you if there's a problem. Press A. Keep the beta version for the third and final install. Whatever the most recent one is, leave it there. Plus pad down and change this number from 57 to 58, this number from 250 to 251, and leave this one the same at 65535. Press A and start the install, press A again. Let the install process run its course for about one minute and you'll get that confirmation screen again suggesting everything is fine or needs to be redone. At this point, you've done all three of the installation steps and you can just press the reset button on the front of your Wii system and go back to the Wii Homebrew menu. Now that those custom iOS files are installed, you can now run USB Loader GX. So from the Homebrew channel, select it, then click on Load. Each time it starts, it loads the resources such as any new art files and things of the sort and initializes the USB ports around the back. Inside USB Loader GX, you have the options to do several different things. The first one I want to show you is how to actually copy the game over to the hard drive. The next thing we'll look at is how to get the artwork. Click on the plus button down here in the bottom left corner. You'll get a menu popped up that'll ask, do you want to install a game? Um, yeah, so tell it yes. Then insert your disc. For this example, I'll be using Kirby's Dreamland. The console will read the disk and then take a moment to read what disk you actually have installed in the Wii system. Then you'll get a pop-up message that says, continue to install game. Click OK. And the Wii will start copying the game over to your hard drive. This 1.1 gigabyte game in real time took about four minutes to copy over. Great, now that the game's done copying, click OK. You'll notice the game's there, but it has no images or artwork, which looks kind of awkward. Let's fix that. Slide up to the top menu with your Wiimote pointer, and then click on this icon. This pulls up the list of games, and essentially is what gives you access to the media database. Make sure you're hovering over the name of the game that you just installed. It says Kirby Wii, but it's Kirby's Dreamland. Come over to the question mark and click it with the A button. Make sure all of these are selected if you want the maximum amount of art available for your game and click OK. It'll tell you that it's found some missing files. Click yes to add them. This is why you need internet access. It'll download them 
and install them right to your Wii. After a short download time, you'll get a confirmation message that all images downloaded successfully. So click on OK. But what you'll notice is you won't see anything back in USB Loader GX. The best way I found to deal with this is just come down to the Wii icon in the bottom right corner and click it. Then just relaunch Homebrew Channel. Once Homebrew Channel comes back up, go back to USB Loader GX, click on it in the Homebrew Channel, and then click on Load to start it up again. What this process does is it allows USB Loader GX to do the initializations again. Remember when we looked at it the first time, we saw that it lets it do initializations every time it loads. And voila! All of the artwork has been loaded for all of the games installed here. And here's Kirby's Dream Land. Let's load it up and check it out. Click on it with your pointer and the A button, and you'll even see the disc artwork spinning. Isn't that cool? So click on the disc to load the game. Now you've successfully backed up your Wii game to your hard drive so you can safely put away your disc and archive it. This is a tremendous value add to your Nintendo Wii that not only helps preserve your disc but it also takes significant amounts of wear and tear off of your optical drive. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on great original new content as it's posted. And for more information on ways to get the most out of your Nintendo consoles, check out these videos here. Thanks so much. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.